Hey there, and welcome back to Clean Technica TV. Uh, this is part two of our coverage of the Tesla Dojo supercomputer after AI day. You've probably watched the previous video yesterday or not that long ago, so let's dive right in. So there is one correction and one addition that I need to make to part one. A uh, colleague of mine noticed this. A hard drive does not just have a response time of 100 nanoseconds. It's 7 to 150,000 for an SSD and a million to 10 million for a spinning hard drive. It's a big difference. And then the addition is that there is a report from China that uh, Tesla is working both with Broadcom and TSMC, but it's important to stress that while it is possible, it has not been confirmed. All right, now we can get started. Tesla flops the flops test. Now that we have gone through all of the nitty gritty details, we can finally compare Dojo to the competition. A Tesla training tile has nine petaflops of raw compute performance. Now, I kind of skipped over what a petaflop even is because you, dear viewer, we're not yet down a rabbit hole, but now that you are, a petaflop is composed of two parts. So first part, peta, is just the figure that comes after tera, giga, mega, kilo. Then flop stands for floating point operations per second, which is again different from a top, also known as a tera operation per second. Uh, but those are actually for calculating int 8, int 16, int 32, and we can forget about those for now. Though I should mention, NVIDIA sometimes sadly only releases performance in tops rather than flops, or even better, both. I'm not going to try to get technical and explain what these performance values actually stand for. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that you don't accidentally end up comparing apples to oranges as Tesla sort of did. In fact, even I made a mistake in my uh, article analysis of this and I'm going to be issuing uh, some corrections. Now, when someone gives you a flops value, you need to make sure whether they mean FP64, FP32 or FP16 since each is twice as hard as the next. Each of these sometimes also go by a different name. FP16 is sometimes called half precision floating point format. FP32 is uh, then called single precision floating point format. And FP64 is called the double precision floating point format. Now, the most common benchmark used is called the HPL test. This I accidentally confused with the newer HPL AI test. I didn't know they were different. I just thought one was, you know, short for the other. You know, before AI Day, my interest and knowledge mostly covered how chips work and not specifically how supercomputers work. In any case, HPL is FB64 and the new HPL AI is FB32. Tesla's D1 chips support FB32, BFB16, which is actually a hybrid version of FB32 and FB16, and most people actually call it BFloat16. Then there's also a whole new one that Tesla developed and called CFB8, and since it's new, I can't tell you much about that. And finally, from the top side, rather than flop, we covered this earlier, the D1 chip also supports Int32, Int16, and Int8. Now, to calculate performance of Dojo correctly this time, Tesla has shared the performance of the whole exopod in BFB16. And for the individual D1 chip, they shared the performance in both BFB16 and FB32. So this doesn't always scale perfectly, but to compare the results to the other supercomputers, uh, FB64 performance, we can divide the FB32 performance by two. And we can estimate the total exapod FP32 performance by dividing that 1.1 exaflop figure uh, Tesla gave in BFP16 by the BFP16 score of the D1 chip, uh, which has uh, 362 teraflops of uh, compute power. So in FP32, we get 68.75 petaflops, approximately. And for FP64, we then get 34.375 petaflops. This means that Dojo would be the 11th most powerful supercomputer. Now, in case I hadn't made this clear yet, performance per SOC and performance as a whole does not scale up perfectly. And each of these compute tasks, uh, FP32, FP64, and BFP16, are not exactly equal or totally proportional either. 
especially when it comes to BFP16. The math we did here is pretty simple and might be off by multiple petaflops. Now again, I must point out the futility of these comparisons. It would be like pointing out that the new Tesla Model S Plaid, top speed of uh, 322 kilometers an hour or 200 miles an hour, would not put it in the top 10 of fastest cars in the world. Though its acceleration from 0 to 100 or 0 to 60 of just 1.99 seconds puts it basically in first place. I really wish Tesla had done a better job of presenting the numbers for Dojo because that 1.1 exaflop value is, you know, deceptive and basically useless for comparisons. I would also be rather surprised if they don't have any numbers that show how well their NVIDIA-based supercomputer that ranks 5th place in the world does in BFP16 slash CFP8 because then we can finally understand what Dojo is capable of. However, I'm sure that you would agree that Tesla would not be putting all this effort into Dojo if they didn't think that it would work better than what they currently have. Tesla absolutely hates waste. They optimize their production lines penny by penny. You it demonstrate, Doc, is it good or bad? The fact that Dojo is not the supercomputer with the most raw compute power is not a bad thing, as Tesla built this supercomputer for a very specific task which is training neural networks based on lots and lots of 360 degree video. All of the code is written specifically to work ideally on this hardware. All other supercomputers and even regular computers in the world are built with flexibility in mind to be able to accommodate a large variety of tasks. On the one hand, it means that other supercomputers, even the most powerful Fugaku, will most likely be slower than Dojo for the tasks that Tesla has in mind. On the flip side, this might also be Dojo's Achilles heel because any other kind of simulations that scientists might want to conduct, it won't run very smoothly on Dojo and they would probably be better off choosing one of the other supercomputers and it might even run faster on a supercomputer that on paper is slower than Dojo. Though we don't know that for certain. As was said in the Q&A, Tesla built Dojo first and foremost for itself and its needs. Tesla won't be finished with improving FSD until it's a thousand times safer than a human being. For many years, we will already be sleeping in a car that has no steering wheel, while Tesla will still be working on the next nine in the 99.9999999 safety figure. Then, now that they have announced uh, the Tesla robot called Optimus Subprime, you know, since its prime time has not arrived yet, Tesla and subsequently Dojo has a whole new realm of challenges to explore. Also, even if Dojo won't be able to help scientists find dark matter or solve other mysteries of the cosmos, there are still tons of other real-world AI applications like robotic kitchens, factory automation, space construction robots, and many others for which Dojo will be absolutely perfect. Dojo is made up of a mere 10 cabinets and is thus also the smallest supercomputer in the world when it comes to size. Fugaku, on the other hand, is made up of 256 cabinets. That's a pretty big room. How Tesla will improve Dojo 2.0. So from the moment that I saw all these groundbreaking innovations in Tesla's architecture, knowing Elon Musk and his five-step design process, it became clear how these ideas came to be and that they happened halfway through the design process. Those steps, which we recently learned about thanks to YouTuber and SpaceX expert Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, and his three-part Elon Musk interview. So those steps are, one, make your requirements less dumb. Two, Try very hard to delete the part or process. Three, simplify or optimize. Four, accelerate cycle time. Five, automate. Here's a simplified version of what most likely happened uh, during the design process. Okay, uh, run me through the fabrication steps once again. Okay, so step one, all the components are added to the silicon wafer. Uh, step two, uh, we cut the SOCs out of the wafer. Uh, what if we don't? What if we don't what? What if we don't cut the SOCs out of the wafer? What if we just, you know, leave them in there? Can't we make them talk to each other right on the wafer? And the rest is history.
For the 10x improvement, the first thing that they will be able to do, uh, rather than leave a bunch of SOCs on a wafer, they could create a system on a wafer rather than 25 systems on chips on a wafer. Being modular is useful, but the, by making the whole wafer a system could significantly increase performance. Since this too would be unprecedented, it is hard to predict how much this will increase performance, but my gut feeling says that this would be very powerful. Also, it is the next logical step that would fall under maker requirements less dumb. Tesla's training tile is the octavalve of silicon. Now that you are intimately familiar with Dojo, there is a very good parallel that I can draw for you. Some of you may have seen Sandy Monroe on YouTube. He has taken apart the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mach-E, among other vehicles. I hope you have watched those videos, but if not, please take a look at this one and this one. The Mach-E is a fantastic car. I recently drove it, and full review coming really soon. But the way that they handled the heat exchange... Sandy Monroe literally pretends to faint upon seeing it. Whereas Tesla has something called the Octovalve, which doesn't have more than 30 hoses connecting things. Uh, it is a very tight package, all in one, in a way that has never been done before. So rather than 18 meters worth of hoses, Tesla has 6 meters. Rather than 35 parts, Tesla has 10. Rather than holding 22.4 kilograms of fluid, which is harder to uh, obviously warm slash cool, Tesla has only 9 kilograms of fluid. For Dojo, this training tile, it's undoubtedly the octavalve of silicon. Though, in my opinion, it's even more impressive than that. When I look at my beautiful desktop computer to the right of me and the Tesla tile on the screen to the left of me, it really feels exactly like my Powerful computer with all the tubes and wires has become that Mach-E we should faint at when seen. Also, full disclosure, that image you're seeing in a corner, that was my computer back in 2014, now it's way better looking. Um, in any case, if anything, it, 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 this also shows just how much the computer industry has been slacking off with the standard thinking and our comfortable backwards compatible ports and standards. This really is a Nokia versus iPhone moment. The uh, only sad part is that Tesla's SoC architecture is so ill-equipped for, you know, purposes besides training neural nets fed with lots of video. Nonetheless, if standard processors, graphics cards, and SoC chips were designed uh, with the same kind of elegance, uh, compression, and modularity, you could make all computers in the world a lot more powerful. Actually, part of the problem is also lazy programming, not properly making use of all the cores and parts of the chip, but that's a whole different uh, <laughs> problem. In fact, while the Q&A wasn't very clear, it does sound like Tesla wants to make a hybrid stack with different SoCs so that Dojo can process more types of tasks. Hardware for chip starting with Cybertruck. During the Q&A, Elon revealed that Hardware 4 will come in about a year and will be launched together with Cybertruck. At the same time, the Cybertruck will also have at least one improved camera or maybe even a whole new camera system altogether. Though Elon did explain that they still haven't maxed out the cameras that they currently use and the new camera system won't be necessary for the car to achieve full autonomy at a safety level 200-300% to 300 safer than a human driver. In contradiction to what Elon said during Autonomy Day, Hardware 4 will actually be four times more capable than Hardware 3. Earlier in the Q&A, Tesla stated that they can't make the neural nets too complex or they would be too slow for Hardware 3. While this wasn't specifically uh, mentioned this way uh, in the presentation, Hardware 4 will have a 4x uh, performance increase and could actually make those larger neural more complexer neural nets that would have taken too long to come up with an answer on hardware 3 viable for hardware 4. Interestingly Tesla also added that this kind of bigger better neural net would only be worthwhile if they have the data to feed it with. Hence Dojo that can process so much video is exactly what Tesla needs to make complexer neural nets. Offering Dojo and AI neural net training software to others. I already published a whole article and video about this right before AI day, and all of that still holds true, which is 
really impressive. But depending uh, on what they meant with this during the Q&A, I might have also been right about my most important prediction uh, regarding Tesla selling their software tools, though Tesla did not expressly confirm it. Tesla has indeed significantly automated the AI labeling and training process to the point that machine learning experts can focus on more difficult tasks, whereas labelers can do more of the legwork needed to train autopilot. Tesla has said that they will offer Dojo as a service. However, from the presentation in the Q&A, it became rather clear that this is basically useless unless you are A, making a real-world AI uh, with lots of video and simulations, and B, are making use of Tesla's highly automated uh, labeling and training tools for that AI. Tesla did state uh, that they will work on a PyTorch extension to make Dojo work well uh, with the tools that uh, machine learning scientists are used to, but the audience seemed a bit skeptical about how well this would actually run on Dojo, uh, Dojo's very specific hardware. While this was not expressly confirmed, this most likely means that Tesla will be offering its uh, labeling and training tools along with access to Dojo, a uh, sort of full software development stack, if you will. And the image you're currently seeing uh, does seem to support that hypothesis. Elon also confirmed, once again, that Tesla is willing to license FSD to other automakers, and hopefully Tesla AI Day has made them at least think twice about that, and maybe hopefully lose some sleep on that. Watching Tesla AI Day was shocking for me. This is They have completely shattered my perception of what I thought was possible for computer technology, and this is at least the third time they've done this to me. <laughs> Previous times, including uh, Battery Day, Autonomy Day, Tesla is a company like no other, and they don't let you forget it. Dojo, the Octavalve, the new pressure overwrapped uh, electric motor, uh, the 4680 cell, the Terra factory, and the list goes on. You know, I'm actually so relieved that after years, I finally have an answer to a question that I had for Elon. And that question was, Elon, you have the machine that builds the machine, so where's the robot that builds the robot? And you know, in my previous article such video, I already covered what a robot future could mean for us. But now that Tesla has announced Optimus Subprime, I will also make a separate analysis of that at the earliest opportunity. Dojo, it is mind-blowing, and I hope that this analysis has helped you fully grasp the extent of the innovations that Tesla has made here. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so that more people get to see it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, the button is right under the thumbs up button. We have a bunch of really cool videos coming out in the next while, so stay tuned and do that by clicking the bell icon uh, to be notified when that content goes live. Have a wonderful day and till next time. See ya.